Welcome to Purpose of Life Ministries, where we want you to find your purpose, live your purpose, and share your purpose. Please join the service in progress as Pastor David W. Green Sr. shares a word from his series, The Calm. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard North Drive in Indianapolis. Has he been a favorite? 
and become as men.
Ananias? Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he's praying. In a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord Ananias answered, I've heard many reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he's come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. And for a few moments, I would like to use for a subject or a theme, don't tell God what somebody said. Don't tell God what somebody said. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I come today on an assignment to help us in terms of uh, God's purpose and plan for our lives. Don't tell God what somebody said. We, we're continuing our series that we've entitled Mission Possible. I want us to understand that favor does not make the mission easy. Favor makes the mission possible. This series was geared for us to see that when God has given you a vision, a directive, a plan, a purpose for your life, that you have to have some discipline in order to achieve the vision, the plan, the purpose. You just don't sit back and it just shows up. There's some work involved. You must have some discipline on your side. And one of the disciplines you must have is prayer. You've got to know how to go to God in prayer. Yeah. We use Nehemiah as a launching pad. And every time that Nehemiah had to deal with various situations, challenges, one of the consistent things that he did is he went to God in prayer. He sought the Lord and said, God, I need your help now. And that's something we must do. We must have a discipline, a habit of prayer. Now today, I want us to understand that this prayer cannot be one directional in that you merely just talk to God. But you must understand that you must receive from God. Hello, somebody. And then whatever he's instructing us to do, we have to submit to what he said. And that requires some discipline. Amen. Amen. Because it's going to blow somebody's mind, but God is not concerned about what somebody told you. Especially when he spoke to you. Now, so walk with me today and invite your intellect to our text and, and summon your senses for just a few moments. Dr. Luke is writing to our hearts on today and he's writing about a fellow by the name of Saul. Saul. Now this, many of you, this is not Saul of the Old Testament. This is the Saul of the New Testament. Many of you may know him as the Apostle Paul. This is prior to his conversion. Prior to his conversion. And at this particular time, Saul is a terrorist. Yeah, he's a terrorist. His assignment is, in his mind, is to kill Christians. Yeah, so Saul, he did not like Christians, and so he, he found somebody that was praying, man or woman, male or female, black or white. His thing was an eliminate them. That was his focus. That was what Saul did. He just didn't like Christians. He saw them as a threat to the community. And what he did, he did well. Now, I don't want you to assume because he was annihilating Christians that Pastor, he must have had a mental illness. No, Saul did not have a mental illness. He is a very learned man. He spoke over 13 different languages. So he was a smart man. Amen. He was not mentally disabled. He was on point with what he was doing. He clearly understood what he was doing. He just felt it was in his assignment to kill Christians. So not only do Christians have an enemy, they have a smart enemy. Hello, somebody. Amen. It's one thing to have an enemy, but you got more trouble when it's a smart enemy. Amen. And so it was his assignment to, in his mind was to terrorize Christians, 
people that were trying to do right. Now, I want us to understand that that has not died, that when you're committed to God to do what's right, there's some people assigned to be your terrorists. Did y'all hear me? And, and they're not mentally disabled, it's just they assigned. Amen. Do you remember in Nehemiah there was a Sanballat, there was a Tobiah, there was a Geisha. He, he had some people who did not like him and the assignment that was on his life. Take a deep breath. There are some people who are anointed not to like you. Did you hear what I said? Y'all looking at me strange. With your same cute looking self up in here. I know you all that in the bag of chips, but understand that there's some people that are anointed not to like you. Their assignment is to get you to look bad. Look up and down your road. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, he ain't lying. There's some folk that's assignment is I don't like you. You ain't done anything to them. They don't even know you like that. They just don't like you because. And so Christians got a terrorist. When you, Paul said it like this, what I would do good. Evil is always pressed. It's always somebody that don't like you. And so that's why you can't stay focused on an assignment for God trying to please everybody. Because the devil sends some folk intentionally to terrorize your plan that God has given you. Just don't like you. My God. And sometimes they smart too. And that can get on your nerves. Some of y'all laugh, you know what I'm talking about. Now, not only was he smart, when we go there and, and, and launch into chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, we find out that he had connections. Saul was smart and got to hook up. Because the text said, meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest. Let me go talk, talk to the chief dog. And he asked him for letters to the synagogues, to the churches in Damascus. So if he found anyone there along who belonged to the way, that's the Christian movement. When you read that New Testament, the way, capitalized, that's talking about the Christian movement. Whether they men or women, he said, I won't take them prisoners. I'm going to bring them back to Jerusalem. Damascus is about 160 uh, miles northeast of Jerusalem. It was a city. It's the capital of Syria on, on today, modern-day Syria. It's surrounded by three uh, mountains, and it was a leading trading place. And so Paul, Saul has said in his mind, I won't go there because I heard there's some folk over there that's pr promoted the name of Jesus. And because they're promoting the name of Jesus, I need to go there because they're supposed to be a part of this movement. And I'm going to rest them jokers cheap priest and I'm going to bring them back to Jerusalem. Now he wasn't really going to rest them up. Some of them was going to get, you know, lost along the way. You know what that means, don't you? And they weren't going to make it back to Jerusalem. Because his agenda was, let me take them out. So now we got this fellow that's smart and got connections. And his assignment is, I want to take out some Christians. People that are promoting the way of Christ. The Bible said in verses 3 and 4, chapter 9, that he said, as he neared Damascus, as Saul was getting close to Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now here, here Saul is on his way to Damascus going to put the church out of business. And God stopped him. Y'all missed it right there. I said he, he was on his way going to put the church out of business and God stopped him. And if anybody in here can think about just embracing the notion that perhaps somebody was on your, the way to your house last night to break in and God stopped it. I got a few people in here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all worth waiting on. I'm talking about 
can you just do a flashback real quick and think about maybe there were some times in your life, yeah, you would have been dead, but God, oh, can I get a witness? Yeah, 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 you would have been destroyed, but God, oh, you would have lost your mind, but God, And who am I talking to in here? You've been through some stuff, and now that you think about it, the Lord showed up and He stopped it. Sister Barbara, somebody in here was diagnosed with cancer, and it looked like the God stopped it. I ain't in here by myself. Somebody in here, you was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, but God. You was about to lose your mind, but God, he sucked. Who am I talking to? Why are y'all looking at me strange? Somebody listen to me right now. You would have lost your job this week, but God, stop it. Why are you looking so cute? Somebody in here, you would have lost your car. You know your note ain't paid, but God, for somebody listening to me, y'all still looking at me strange. You would have been kicked out of that place you were living in. You know your rich still, but God has stopped it. You ain't got to look way back. For some of us can just look back over the last few days. And you can give God some praise because the Lord, he stopped it. There was some stuff that was coming your way, but God. There was some chaos that had your name written on it, but God, he stopped it. Yes, it was. There was some confusion on your trail, but God, he stopped it. Can I get a witness in here? Or somebody knows you were filed for divorce already, but God, he stopped it. Anybody in here, you can take a little bit of time. Some praise for the stuff that he stopped in your life. You were on your way. Yes, you were. The wrong direction. But God, he stopped it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Open your mouth and say, God, he stopped it. Your neighbor didn't get it. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, in my life, God stopped it. Is there anybody in here that there was some curses headed my way? But God, he stopped it. Can you open your mouth and say, God, he stopped it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. On your way to destroy your own self. But God, God stopped it. Some of us is here right now. God stopped. You can't.
can't tell me God won't stop you in your track. God will take your haters and let me stop there. I'm just being real, man. Somebody here, you can identify with me. You was on the verge of getting ready to tell somebody off. Getting ready to give them all the words you got. Come on, talk to me, somebody. And the law had to stop your haters from, because if they had said one more word about you, you can pay the people your mind. If they say one more thing, I'm talking to the real people now. All the church, fake church folk, I ain't talking to you, but the real people know. If they had said one more word, if you have heard one more thing that they said about you, the only reason they didn't get the cussing of their life is God. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, he's talking real stuff right there. Y'all say that, y'all say that, y'all say that. I done got carried away. I feel like running a little bit. Y'all know we can't be doing it. But I don't know about you, but sometimes I just praise the Lord for the stuff he stopped. I was studying this text and I got happy just me and the Lord. And I started thinking about all the stuff that God stopped at. My God! I don't know why you're looking at this man. Most of us here know somebody that died younger than you. How come it wouldn't you? God stop you. Didn't mean he didn't come looking for you. But the Lord stopped. The reason you didn't die in that car wreck. It's the Lord. The reason you didn't die in that shootout. The reason you ain't in jail right now, come on somebody, ain't because you ain't done nothing but God. Y'all looking at me strange. The only reason that cop wasn't right there is God stopped him a block short of where you was at, baby.
Yeah, somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. He stopped some of stuff for me. Thank you, Jesus. He stopped some of stuff for me. Thank you, Jesus. He stopped some of stuff for me. Open your mouth. Say thank you, Jesus. You stopped some of stuff for me. got sideways and turned over and over again. Right. We both walked away. Yeah. You can't tell him and you can't tell me God stop so Because we could have been dead. We should have been dead. But God stop so and Let us walk away. You can't tell me God will stop so He'll stop. Shut your ass up. Y'all know what I I got the room. Let me get to my hand pass. I don't get to this time. Forget it. I ain't trying to. But I'm telling you, it's good to have a God on your side that will stop you. I'm talking about stuff you don't even see coming. And the Lord's like, y'all don't even hear me. You shout sometimes for the enemies he don't let come to your house. My God, they got cut off. God stopped them. Haters was on their way to your place. And God, Some phone calls you didn't get because God. Y'all, let me, let me, let me, let me. The Bible said, let me. Let me get in my theme passage. The Bible said in Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. He's another key figure in this text. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias! Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, I need you to go down to Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul for his prayer. Yes, yes. The Lord comes to Ananias. Ananias, he was a Christian. And the Lord says, so hey man, I need you to go see Saul. I told you Saul had a reputation. He's a terrorist. Saul said, what's up? Saul, 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 Saul was there praying. And then nice gets word, go see. Hmm. Go see this dude that's a terrorist. That don't like Christians. I'm supposed to be one. Submission ain't gonna be my issue right here. Got a directive from God. Here's what you need to do. Notice what the Bible said in verses 13 and 14. I'm gonna get up out of here. The Bible says, and then I said, Lord, I've heard many reports about this man, all the harm he's done to the holy people in Jerusalem. Yeah. Man, he's got authority, he got connections, she preached on okay. In other words, and I said, Lord, are you serious? You want me to go see this dude? This dude's reputation precedes. Lord, just in case you didn't know, man, you know, he, he got permission from the chief priest and and you know, he, he hurts people. Lord, don't you know that? But guess what? You, you don't tell God what somebody said. The God that we serve is all-knowing. You ain't got to get into what somebody said. I'm trying to help us in here. 
See, we've got to learn how to just say yes, Lord, to God. When he, when he gives direction, he doesn't need to hear your, your commentary. He, he, he knew all about Saul. He was the one, Sister Brenda, who had stopped Saul. He does not need Ananias' assessment of the situation. I, I need to help us in here. Because sometimes when God gives us a direction, Lord, don't you know what the doctor said? Come on, talk to me, somebody. The, Lord, don't, don't you know they told me in third grade that I wouldn't be able to do stuff like that. Lord, don't, don't you know that I've been told that I'd never be anything? Lord, don't you know that the banker said that I'd never have this? Don't you know, Lord? Don't tell God what somebody said. Y'all still looking at me strange. Y'all looking at me like, yeah, Pastor, I done done that. I'm trying to help us with our spiritual life. We've got to learn how to say, have enough discipline to say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. See, if God, if the Lord tells you you're going to be healed, oh, are you hearing me? Don't go into some dissertation on what the doctor said. Y'all look at that mission. If the Lord said you're going to be blessed, then why are you talking about what somebody said? If the Lord said you're going to be the head and not the tail, why are you talking about what you know they said, but I, they don't think I'd be able to do that? Why are you reporting what somebody else said when God has already spoke? If God said it, that settles it. You don't need to go back to him and talk about what somebody said. Turn to your name and say, name. Amen. Don't tell God, God. what somebody else said. Right. I'm going to help you for free. Right. God ain't interested in what you heard. That don't hurt my feelings. I'm just being real with you. You got to be disciplined enough to say, God, yes, Lord, I'm just going with you because I understand the blessing comes from you. And if you spoke it, it's going to come to pass. All the demons in hell can't prevent it because God can just give one word and stop every demon in the That's all they got to do. So the Lord is not interested in talking about what you heard. Well, I heard this. The Lord don't care. When he says, this is what I'm going to do in your life, it will come to pass. When he says, this is what I need you to do, we just say, yes, Lord, because whatever he said is going to work out. God is going to turn it around. The problem with most people is we get hung up between what we heard and what God knows. I think I just said something. We get caught up in the middle.
just for you. you. You've got to recognize that God is in the recycling business, that he's turning stuff around. I, I know, I know, it seems hard to believe that this terrorist, this killer of Christians would turn around and be an apostle, but that's just a sign of God's recycling business. You see, I don't want us to get down on Saul because most of us, if not all of us in here, we haven't always been right, done right, or even thought right. As a matter of fact, we can thank the Lord that he stopped us from going to hell. Yeah, God picked us up and then turned around. Who am I talking to in here? Anybody in here know that God will recycle, yes he will, and turn some stuff around. The God I serve can take your tragedy and turn it into triumph. The God I serve can take your burden and turn it into a blessing. The God I serve can take your despair and turn it into hope. The God I serve can take your fear and turn it into faith. You gotta get a witness in here. The God I serve can take your sadness and turn it into joy. Yes, he can. He can take everything that's negative around you and turn it into positive. Uh, can I get a witness? If we learn how the trust in him that we learn how to say yes Lord he'll show up and he'll show out yes he will he'll turn your midnight in the new day that's the reason the psalmist said weeping may endure for night but he said joy is coming in the morning can I get a witness in here? I feel my help this morning. Somebody in here, you ought to recognize that we're just a product of God stopping destruction on our lives and turning us around. All he did, y'all, was pick us up out of the darkness and bring us in into the light. Can I get a witness in here? Pull your church face down for just a moment and be real enough to admit to yourself that God has brought you from a mighty long way. Yes, he has. He looked beyond all of our faults and met us at an ease. Do y'all hear me in here? We ought to be thankful for his grace and his mercy. Do y'all hear me in here? Be thankful that the Lord gave us another opportunity to give him praise and to give him glory. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm grateful today that God is in the saving business that he can save you from your own self sometimes. Can I get a witness? He can save you from destroying your own self. Yes, he can. Anybody in here can be a witness and warrior and a testifying saint. But God will turn some stuff around. Is there anybody in here? You've been in some bad situations, but God turned it around. Yeah. You can really say to your neighbor, neighbor, he's working it out for you. You need to stop stressing, stop worrying, stop complaining, and understand. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Lord told me to tell somebody here that why you sitting in here giving him the praise that God is already worked it out. Do y'all hear me? That's the reason you ain't got to tell the Lord what somebody said. Why are you giving him the praise? The Lord is working it out. We got some situations.
situation God is working it out for you he never comes short of his word he's working it out 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 He's working it out. Don't tell God what somebody say. He's working it out. He may not come when you want him, but it's always right on time. He's working it out. We're gonna extend the invitation to this place. Thank you for listening to Purpose of Life Ministries. We hope you enjoy the message. If you would like a copy of this sermon, call our office at 317-925-0335 or visit our website, www.purposeoflifeministries.com. If you're in the Indianapolis area, we would love for you to visit one of our three services on Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or noon. We're located at 3705 Kessler Boulevard North Drive in Indianapolis. 